Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John, and it's time for a review of the seventh studio album, The End So Far, by the heavy metal band Slipknot. This is the final album on a contract that they signed all the way back in 1998. Imagine being bound to a piece of paper that you signed like a lifetime ago, and they're just now fulfilling that in 2022. Similar to the cycle for We Are Not Your Kind, which ended up releasing in 2019, we got a single about a year or so before the actual album made it out to the world, and this time the Chapel Town rag kicked things off, and I really wasn't feeling the fire with that one. It landed on the generic side of the coin, and it felt like they were playing into some of the tendencies that they thought fans would enjoy, but really, it just came across like it didn't quite have a personality. One thing that kept coming back to me when listening to this record is that I can't help but feel that the end so far has the thematic and often musical appeal of that of a 2000s horror movie soundtrack. And depending on how you feel about like late 90s, early 2000s, all that stuff in that genre, I personally loved that time for just how over the top, cheesy, bad effects, all that good stuff that makes it feel very dated. This in some ways, I'll admit, feels dated production-wise, and I honestly wish that they had maybe worked with somebody else other than Joe Barassi, not to say that he hasn't had a great track record, I just, I don't know if it's the best fit here. There's several guitar solos on this record that range from melodic to fast and furious. I love the fact that they just add a bunch of raucous energy that isn't necessarily from the heaviest part of their collective soul, but I feel like it kind of radiates the best parts of their more experimental albums, quote unquote. Jay Weinberg absolutely kills it on the drums. Some of the double bass pedals that are working on tracks like Hive Mind, I'm just tipping the cap all the way over here. I am scared, sir, how hard you're going. Sid Wilson also comes in clutch with some fantastic scratching. I love the turntables that have been more and more prominent over the last few albums. We Are Not Your Kind had its moments, but this album has several distinct moments where it's just him front and center. When the dying song Time to Sing came out as the second single, I found myself overjoyed like this is everything that you could possibly want in a Slipknot song. It feels classic, but not like it's stuck inside of the cage of the same old songs that they always write. It feels fresh, it feels heavy, it's got a biting hook to it, and Corey Taylor absolutely dominates, and that's what I want from Slipknot, so it gave me encouragement towards what this album would be. If you're expecting all velocity all the time, then I think you're sorely mistaken for where Slipknot are at at this point in their career. They're attempting not to stagnate, and I really do appreciate this. Acidic is a great example of a track that steps out of bounds. There's some keyboards in the back of this track. There's there's also a bit more of forestation in terms of the thickness of the instrumental. I love the fact that they cut to a solo at some point, and it really makes the song a lot more explosive. I feel those fuses igniting throughout the track list. Another one that comes to mind is the third release single, Yin. It starts off a little bit slow, and it definitely has some spooky season vibes to it, but once it actually cuts in, it's a sneak attack from behind, slit your throat. H377 is definitely vying for the spot of heaviest song on the album. I think it's a fantastic track. This one feels so electrifying because everybody in the band is firing on full cylinders. It doesn't feel like they're treading water or trying to recreate the heaviness of the past. It's something new, something even more visceral in this new world. The weaker tracks like the rather boring Chapel Town Rag and even Warranty, despite the fact that it has some crushing, menacing grooves to it, I just don't know that it stands out in the context of their entire discography. I don't think there's a ton of duds here, but there are moments that just feel pieced together, and the band admitted this themselves. Jim Root, Corey Taylor, and many of the other members have talked about this in interviews, how the album was definitely a labor of love. And I'm not gonna lie and say that you don't feel that, because there are times where it feels like they were at odds, 
but personally, I like the way the tension played out. Hive Mind goes absolutely nuts. It's sure to be a mosh pit rager. I think this track deserves the acclaim. I know the fans are going to be clicking with this one, and it's a shame that those tracks are probably going to get praised the most when I think on the other side of the spectrum, a bit of a different side of a song with Heirloom, I feel like those are every bit as good. I love the guitar tones there, the fact that they're able to strip different layers and paint over it with a different version of Slipknot. I'm just gonna be honest, I don't know how most of you are feeling about the track Medicine for the Dead, but it's personally my favorite song on the end so far. Medicine feels like the metamorphosis for turning into a werewolf. There's multiple Jekyll and Hyde personality things going on here and I love the conflicting tone of the song. It starts off with a rather dreary intro, but that explosion after that big buildup around the one minute mark, it's definitely a heart-stopping moment, one of the best things on this thing. What did you guys think of the record? Let me know in the comments section down below, and while you're down there, you can check out more of my Slipknot videos on screen. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for the love of music, and other than that, I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.